Well, old South of the video stroke is a show called Off Our Strokes. We got Andrew and me and a friend Cody. We're going to rank some fucking songs. Rank them songs. The songs going to end rank songs. The longest sticks in the whole damn town. The longer than old King Kong. The meaner than the junkyard dog. Yeah, rock on! Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to uh, <laughs> Off Our Stones, a uh, subsidiary of Like 500 Stones, um, where basically Brooklyn and I looked at the Rolling Stone Top 500 Songs of All Time and said, we can do better. Uh, is that true? I don't know if that's the case. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. That's why we have Cody here. He is he is the people. He, you know, I haven't done this before. I want to correct you. Every show, I've sat here for 19 episodes. 19 episodes, you say, do the same intro that me and Brooklyn thought that we'd have a better list. And I'm not here to pat myself on the back, but I pitched this idea to you motherfuckers, and I don't get any of the credit for it. 19 episodes, you've taken credit for this. I've even given you the win and let made Brooklyn listen to fruit salad for a week. <laughs> Give me my dang respect, man. Give me my respect. Hold on. Here, you know what? This is what we're going to do, then. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put me back down. I don't want to be up here. All right, yeah, yeah. Get, get back. I'm scared down. of heights. I'm scared of heights. <laughs> um, as Brooklyn alluded to, Cody is the voice of the people. Um, because Brooklyn and I are music snobs. Um, so Cody still has four vetoes that he can use up until song number fifty-one. That will be his last time that he can pick uh, a veto. And he's got three switcheroos where he can take one song uh, on a part of the list and move it down or up if he wants to. We didn't say the cutoff point for that, but uh, I would say not the top ten. Oh, okay. yep, yeah, same. <laughs> Let's go. With I like that point, but whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we do, oh, we'll talk about this after the show. Uh, oh, so. so uh, Last time we ended at 131, and uh, we sent Cody the playlist. Cody, real quickly, what were your base thoughts on this playlist overall, this section of the list? Thank you so much for asking me that question. Um, so, okay, I'm just – we've been through 19 of these now. This is our 19th one. There's very consistent – you guys like artists more than me, obviously. And they keep showing up, which is okay, but damn it, I'm done with them. Um, there is oh, still one on here. Started. I know, I know. There is one that is just so confusing to me still. Not saying this person is a bad singer, but how the hell they have shown up earlier and now they've shown up here this far advance. I think they're a fine artist, but are they that good? And is this song that great? I don't know. We'll talk about it. But overall... There's some awesome songs, but I think like la- I think it was last week's episode is like the gold standard in like my kind of list. There were like so many Cody songs. Uh, this one has Cody songs, but also some mm, not my more iconic songs, but not like Cody songs. So we'll see. Okay, okay. Uh, real quick before we go on, I'm gonna make this announcement early for people watching. Uh. After this episode, we are going to be going over to a new channel. Um, it's going to be called Like Five Hundred Takes, uh, or something like that. We'll we'll, we'll we're, we're, oh man, I'm going to have to change the theme song. We're no longer south of the video store. We're south uh, of the community, I guess. Well, we're no, we're still south of the video store. In, in a sense, <laughs> we were so low on that list. Um, <laughs> but we will clearly, uh, we'll post, clearly. Yeah, we will, we will post about it again, um, but after this episode, we will be going to a new channel. Until then, buy our shit. Yeah. We still I, have I, fucking merch. I guess one other thing to say too, as well, though, because like, thanks Mike and Nazario for letting us letting us start this and like all the seasons that we've done, like doing doing the most recent list, the 2010s list, and going going up to this point. Um, yeah. Yes. So thank you to Mike and Nazario for having us. Uh, but until then, let's keep going.
because we've got a list to do. So, starting with number... Yeah, we're still going, Mr. Producer Man. I know it's... I know it's 19. Well, we're, we're getting into, like, geriatric age for uh, for shows in this community. <laughs> this is true. And your contract is up when we say it's up. <laughs> this is, that is legally binding. All right. So, moving on to number 130 on our combined list, Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, Brooklyn, you have this one lower, so you can start us off. Uh, yeah, so... I think what has this hot, so I have on my list, uh, one, I, it's one I regularly have in my set whenever I am playing uh, acoustic gigs, um, but this is just such a, a pretty song with a nice kind of sing-along, sing-along chorus. Um, the intro in, in particular, like Josh Frusciante's, um intro is really good. You can tell that he's like heavily inspired by Jimi Hendrix whenever he's doing like the chord progression uh, through the through the verses as well, like the little kind of hammer-ons that he adds on to each thing to kind of give it a little bit of a flair. Um, and then Anthony Kiedis, who's normally like kind of like kind of like David Byrne, but not as not as eccentric. I think he has some of the same characteristics. He's pretty like calm and timid in this until you get to that ending um and i think that ending is is where there's some really heavy heavy things um one thing that i that i normally don't do when i play it live and like just he hearing it again on a re-listen uh is like when you first hear it like you feel like, like when they say one time uh before they get in, into that heavy part but then you realize like, like what the song is about like it's obviously about like about like doing heroin or like doing drugs of some sort i think it was maybe even uh loosely based on like their their guitarist uh pass, passing away uh at such an early such an early age um and like that that little like interlude -y kind of part where it's like the race kind of going back and forth yeah no and then just the like like searing like the one time it's like no 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 like i just want to do this one more time to get through i thought that was kind of clever because you 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 hear like the like one time or two times so much in a in a funk setting that's really kind of meant meant to ramp it up so i kind of like that like like that dichotomy uh yeah so i think that this song is as good as it is because of two reasons um john for is guitar because that opening guitar, you feel the somberness, but you also feel like the there's a spaciousness to it that kind of captures the L.A. scene. Um, and the other thing is Rick Rubin's production on this. Just the way that the, the backing, like that choir vocals that come in uh, towards the end of the song, where it's just like spaced in the mix, where it kind of like carries Kiedis' vocals along with it. Uh, it's like float, like floating down a river in a sense, like how ease uh, those vocals become. Um, and you really do kind of feel the the ennui of the song. Um, Anthony Kiedis just gives like a, a great vocal performance. And lyrically, this is probably one of their deeper, more dense, more personal tracks. Um, and I the think only other one like that deep might be like Snow or Hail off of uh, yeah. Stadium. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would probably agree with you there. Um, Cody, what do you think about Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers? I think you guys probably know this feeling more than I do, but, like, you ever hear a song and you're like, like, you like the song, but then it just goes away for a really long time, and then you hear it again, you're like, oh, my God, that song. Like, that's such a good song. This is, like, one of those, like, that fits like right in the definition of that for me because I'm like, I don't think I'm ever like driving down and be like, you know what, I need to listen to Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Not a shot, okay? I don't even wouldn't consider myself a big Red Ch Hot Chili Peppers fan. Uh, the food or the band, um, but like, um, like I love chilies, but like, let's be real, like I'm not, just, I'm not just chomping off, okay? <laughs> like you take that as like you take that as like I hate all of it altogether. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just not. See, like, well, see the th the thing is, I used to be like you, and then I smartened up, and I was like, I just gotta build my tolerance. Oh, oh, oh okay, all right. <laughs> Spice isn't bad. You know, Spice is a good you, talk, you talk about somebody that grows up, and you're still living in Canada. Okay, let's talk about your problems. Okay, I'm buddy? sorry, I'm dead. <laughs> okay, um, here's the thing. Um, no, I like Spice. I just. 
you know, big spice whatever. girls fan. Cody is. Yeah. Huge. Um, girl power. But, uh, this song is like <laughs> equal. So like that beginning of song is like one of the most iconic, like openings to a song for me. Like it just clicks right into it. And I can sing almost every word to the song, but I could not hear it for five years. And I still, the next time it plays, I can go through the whole thing. Such an easy listen to. And I can just imagine like performing this live and having like everybody get into the song, like singing it would be awesome. So yeah. I Cody, have you ever watched the Woodstock ninety nine documentary? Or like I, I've No. I've I've no. heard terrible stories of that from that. Uh, event, yeah, but... so 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 they so they play oh, at no. Woodstock ninety nine and they play the song, but like most uh, a flea is ass naked. I'm not sure if the rest of them are, but there's uh yeah, it's they uh they do weird things. Was the like, crowd into it? The crowd they, no, they were like the final band and the crowd at that point was already fucking pissed off at yeah. everything else. Already on heroin, yeah, per yeah, yeah, but, actually, yeah, fitting to the song. Um but yeah. So, yeah. Well, all right, let's move on to number one hundred twenty nine then. Good I was choice, trying to think of I was trying to think of a clever segue for this, but it it, it didn't work out. So yeah, I mean, you can't do so what you want by the Rolling Stones, baby. Uh, I have this higher, so I'm gonna go first. Um, this is exactly the song that I would imagine if you took the Rolling Stones and you basically uh, smashed them together with the Beatles. Uh, I really like the French horn. That kind of like leads into uh, Jagger's vocals, just gives a great, great opening to it. Um, the child's, I'm not always a fan of child's choirs, but to open it up with that, I think, well, in, in like rock songs and pop songs, Cody, um, but I think that it's just like a good way to start this song. And it's one of the I more imagine. Pod- <laughs> Hold on, I can just imagine Bar just sitting there with a children's crowd going, God damn it, could they get anybody else? They could get some teenagers? Like, what is this crap? Mm, the Colicatora <laughs> is awful flat. Oh, <laughs> who's that redhead kid up there? Get him on the stage again and see you get harmonized to see this. Oh, great. Get the hook. Uh, <laughs> but there's. There's a positivity to this song that the Rolling Stones don't always tend to have in their songs. And it it just, it sounds amazing. The instrumental outro is just absolutely perfect. It's a long song, but it flies by. So it's just a great, great piece of music. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like the, the, the French horns, it's a really like kind of like soft way to go into the song, especially really like, Given that it's a it's a very positive outlook on a song, but it's really about like just moving on from from a relationship. Like the opening verse, I saw her today at the reception, the glass of wine in her hand. I knew she would meet a connection. Um, and then like the foot and her, and her foot, footloose man was there. Sorry, and can I sim- can I can I just hop onto that real yeah. fast? Um, you said it's about moving on. I also. I think it's about moving on from like the sixties because the first song, the first part's about sex. The second verse is about drugs and the third verse is about rock and roll, which is what the sixties kind of were. Yeah. Okay. And this was released in 69. So that, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Um, I really, I do like the, the, the outro as well. Like the, the piano does a, does a really cool thing. And I love when bands are just jamming out and they hold on to that riff for so long. And then near the end, it's like, all right, double time. Um, and they just, they just pick up the beat, but it keeps everything together. Um, Tom McLean, uh, we've had on before his, uh, what had, it, the band, one of the bands that he's in, actually does a cover of this, and they they speed it up, and it still works. Uh, it's just it's really cool. They can give it a more of a funky funky kind of groove. Um, but yeah, I know I've been like hard ish on the Rolling Stones, but this and Paint It Black are are gold. You can't really can't really touch them. And it's weird because they just seem like the yin uh, the yin and the yang to each other. Those two songs. Yeah. We'll we'll talk about that more when we spoiler talk about Give Me Shelter later on in this series. Uh, but Cody, uh, do you always get what you want? 
fuck no. Um, I'm, I'm a because he can't. You know, yeah, you can't always get what you want. Um, be a lot better if there's children that didn't sing it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's not what I like, said. God, they suck so bad. No, but like I, I enjoy the song. Um, again, it's one of those songs that is like, it does not feel like a Rolling Stone song. In my, it just doesn't. And I guess I think I think arguably this song has been covered a lot too. Yeah. So like, I don't know how many times I've actually heard the Rolling Stones version of the song. If I'm being transparent, like it may could have been them. But just like in my head, I know a lot of people have covered this song and done it. It's a long song, but I enjoy the entire ride of the song, which is important with it being, um, you know, for how long the song really is. So, no, it's really good. Yeah, it's seven minutes. I just don't, I just don't, um, I guess if I had, if you actually asked me the question, I don't know if I fully remember or, if you quiz me on this, who sings this? I think I'd guess a lot of people before the Stones, personally, and that's just my lack of knowledge. But again, even the start of it and then like them singing, it doesn't sound like Mick Jagger to me. But I guess it, it is what it is. But no, it's a great song. Great song. All right. So far, we're Brooklyn. I think we're on a roll so far. Ha. Let's move on then to number one hundred twenty-eight to see if we can keep this up. Could we be on a biscuit though instead? I think biscuits are better. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, Lean on Me by Bill Withers. Uh, I had this higher. This is, first of all, Bill Withers is a man who just does not get the credit that he deserves in the public concert. Um, I think people think of maybe like two songs, three songs by him, and then they're like, eh, whatever. This is one of the most beautiful, harmonious pieces of music I've ever heard. Like the way that he interplays with like the backing vocals is just so good. And you can feel the deep emotional pull, not just from the lyrics, but from the instrumentation and the performance. It is just a deeply personal song that any anyone and everyone can resonate with. Um it's one of the best like come to me anytime that you need me songs. And there's a lot of them. And I think this one's the gold standard because of just how expertly crafted, deeply personal and sonically beautiful it is. Uh, Yeah. I would go off on it being deeply personal, but also just has a message that's that, that, uh, Stands true even even to this day. I remember being pretty hard on this whenever we had talked about it previously, where it's just it's kind of simple and it gets overplayed. But then I was like, all right, well, like let's give it the don't stop a don't stop believing effect. Go back to the first time listening to it. And then I kind of put the two together and I was like, all right, I got the ranking of this wrong. 356 is, is too low. Um it's it's simple as it is because the message that's in this song needs to be needs to be transparent and that like it's like if you are if you are a man that 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 is struggling it need, you need to be it needs to be okay like even not as much nowadays but back then if it was like if you were a guy and you had you had a problems you struggled with it was like no like you you shove that down you power through um and like one of my favorite things in the song, and like musicals do it a lot as well, especially like um, more so like when they look to the crowd. But whenever the music cuts out and it really lets like whatever line the song of the he's delivering carry through, like they just call me brother when you need you need, when you need a hand. We all need somebody uh, t- to lean on. I think that was really effective use uh, of that, um, and just like just kind of just the the carry that he has in in the voice. Um, I'm also with Cody on this, similar to it. You can't always get what you want. I feel like I hear the cover more than I more than I do the original. Um, yeah, you remember, Glee did a pretty good did a pretty good job of this. They kind of added a little bit more um, a little bit more light to it. I would say, but yeah, there's one version that I can't remember if it was the 80s or the 90s. That's the one I hear all the time, and I 
I'm sorry. I hate that version because the moment that one guy comes in going, we be jamming, we be jamming, just completely kills the fucking momentum of the song. So please, please, please listen to the Bill Withers version of this song. Uh, Cody, what are your thoughts on Lean On Me? Well, I want this on the record. I am so glad that I've never heard of that version of it. So let's... Thankfully, Bill Weathers is the only person that gets played in my household. Um, I may be wrong, but this was on the original list, correct or no? Yes. And it was I? I think maybe I was on that episode. I don't know, but I remember. Yeah. But I might not have been. I mean, Brooklyn was talking trash on it, or just didn't really like it that much, or whatever. At the time, I remember that. I think this song is just awesome. There are two songs from around that time frame that are played to death similar like vein of song like you overplayed I can see like that uh, one's lean on me the other stand by me like they're both in those things but both songs are just such on my alley like I love this song uh, it's fantastic I, it, it, it's there's like three songs in this week list that I just some like do I use my switch forward on a few of these because I'm battling with them right now because Depending on what you guys have at the end, I don't know where I sit, but like there are three. This is one of them. I think there are three girl, fantastic Cody songs. So great choice on this one. 83. Correct. And if we did that game, point for both. Pace is probably keeping score. <laughs> please, please Pace. And it's my only way of getting even <laughs> so that I can give Andrew some dog shit songs. <laughs> Oh, come on. Because, well, here, well, here's well, here's the thing, though, is that not only did you give me that that list, but because I had to listen to it for a week, my on-repeat is fucked. The fruit <laughs> salad is just there. Uh, fucking uh, yummy. Justin Bieber is there. So I'm just really curious. Uh, like, this is not to date the episode, but I'm going to date the episode. We're, like, the Monday before Thanksgiving. So, like, I don't know what 500, like, 500 Stones has planned for, like, Christmas, but I think there's something. We have to do something for Christmas. Like, I'm a third, I'm a part owner for this channel at this point. Like, I'm, I don't pay anything for it. Neither do, you know, I don't pay anything. But <laughs> I'm, like, 18%. I come up with ideas to throw you. We need to figure something out for Christmas songs, so. Yeah, I've been, I've been down for that. Yeah, I think we throw can. On, throw on Kirk. Kirk. Kirk always loves uh, talking Christmas. Yeah. So. Do a good old draft. Oh, that'd be interesting. I mean, we've done we've done that before. So, all right. Well, I just make more uh, work for Andrew in Brooklyn. That's the only thing I'm here for. Only thing. Uh, get, all get, right. it, get it in before April. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's move on to number one hundred twenty-seven. No. Will you love me tomorrow? By the Shirelles. Uh Cody doesn't love me to begin with, so let's. He wasn't gonna love me today. He's not gonna love me tomorrow. Um, but I do have this higher, and uh, this is one of the ones where it's the, the simplicity of it just like works incredibly well. Um, I can't remember what the the musical styling of the uh, the string section is. I want to say it's like bossa nova, um, but just like those strings. And that tempo just kind of like worked beautifully and harmoniously. Um, the Shirelles just like absolutely kill it with the vocals. And it's a subject matter that, especially for the time period, is really important uh, to a lot of people. Like, hey, look, I want a serious relationship. So like, I, I know that the moment right now is super passionate and I can like just look in your eyes and I can see that you want to, you know, you, that you want to um, thank you, Mr. Producer Man. Um, but tomorrow, will you still be with me? Like, am I a one night stand to you, or do you want this to be a serious relationship? And I think it's just done incredibly well. Um, Carol King, I believe, wrote this song, and it, you can tell um, that someone of her talent uh, and skill set wrote this. Um, yeah, it's just a fantastic piece. Uh, yeah, I'll echo what Andrew was saying. The the strings in this are, are really nice. It's kind of like a, it's very like relaxing and, and relieving thing. So, something I learned this week that I that I didn't think I was going to learn. Um, I've learned that like why they make 
like for kids' toys and also kind of in a dark way, slot machines. They they're both in the key of C because uh, when you hear it, when you hear C, it's supposed to be very re- relieving and very relaxing. So curse you, casinos and uh, kid toys. You got to change change up your game because you're you, you don't know what you're adding into the system. Make but, slot machines as children's toys, Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but like my, I think the one thing I really want to highlight is the like the the line before like the big like title line like Will You Love Me Tomorrow? Um, just like how the backing vocals kind of add the tension of like especially like it's tonight the light of love is in your eyes, and how they're like just they're adding some really nice harmony and in, into that line, and then whenever they get into that like. When you get into more like the bossa nova tempo or whatever, it it feels fresh, and I and I always like that that good kind of cycle. All right, Cody, I already know how, uh, that you won't love me tomorrow, but uh, do you love this song? No, not really. Um, it's 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 whiny. It's whiny. Wow. It comes off whiny to me. I think the voices are good. I think the vocals and stuff. One Brooklyn already pissed me off because he brought up keys and like things. And, 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 but that's already that's automatically no vote for me. He knows that. Um, but overall, I just think it was a little too like. Will you still love me? Probably not. Like if we're being honest, if this guy's going to be transparent with you, probably not. Like, like, listen. We have had two songs, kind of one night standish. One's Paradise for the Desert. <laughs> this is another one. This <laughs> Yeah, I Nilo heard the, the song and it was like, let's add, let's make this like the second half of a song. <laughs> and listen, here's the thing. I support the guy's version of it. I'm sorry, I just relate better to that than the girl's version. So overall, I think their voices are really good, but overall the song just doesn't get over that hump for 85. Crazy. Crazy. Look, it, it falls into that kind of like Benny King stand by me instrumentation, and it that's just music to my ears. Yeah, you're an old man. That's fine. We got you. Tapioca is the best pudding, and I love it. <laughs> oh, the Matlock Marathon's on today. <laughs> Dude, Thanksgiving, he's going to be the he's gonna be the dad just cra- like crashed out on the couch, like, sleeping. And, Damn, kids. Uh, like, he, I have been so super, super honest about this with everyone that I talked to in, like, the last two weeks. I'm the most dad person that has zero children in the world. <laughs> See them youngins playing out in the trip. <laughs> We're not as young as we used to. Oh, I don't understand, like, Andrew. Kid. You're Andrew. You're twenty nine. Now thirty. You're not <laughs> not as young as I used to be. <laughs> back in back in my day, we used to play outside all the time. Yes, we know. You say it every freaking time. We play us played outside, and you came back in. We don't. You dating out. kids on the TikTok. You know, when I was get off the TikTok. TikTok was just the sound that a clock made. <laughs> I, I hate you so much. Uh, but would you still hate me tomorrow? All right, moving on to number 126. <laughs> Young Americans by David Bowie. Uh, Brooklyn, you had this one higher than I did. Which is which is weird. Because uh, I think you... Because I think... Based on talking a little bit ago, I think you like the song more than I do. Um, I just, I really like the beat. The bass line in this is doing some really cool things. Uh, the sax solo, I, it's like one of the rare times that it matches like a like a Bruce Springsteen or a Billy Joel uh, kind of song. Um, I think it's one of, I think it's the first time in the list so far, but like, but an, an effective key change as well. Um, I was kind of, pl- I was playing it a little bit before he started, started the show and playing along with it. I was like, Oh, it's doing some, like, some like really cool things where there's like in the key change itself, there's one chord that kind of, there's one chord that they do in the key change that fits in with the previous one. So it's like, oh, there is a little bit of familiarity where it isn't like a complete uh, change into and into something else. Um, but yeah, as the American, Andrew, tell us why this is a this is a great American song about America. <laughs> um, actually, it's it's very. Uh, I don't I don't want to say rebellious, but um, it does bring up some things about America that. It's very Nixonian, let's say. Um, especially all of the lines that have to do about like racial relations in America, like the Soul Train line in particular, that 
is cutting. Um, but it also is just like there there are some moments in this song lyrically that are a lot darker than I remember them being. Like all of the relationships at the beginning of the song not ending the way that you would kind of envision them. I think it's what it's doing is taking the the visual of Americana in the 50s and 60s and then just like kind of like breaking it down to what it actually was like. Um and to do that over this groovy soul kind of instrumentation and vibe, it's just absolutely perfect. And it's honestly, it's a bit, it's one of those things like white people taking soul music. Um, <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, yeah, it's re-listening to it and diving deeper into it. It is such a wickedly smart piece, and it's probably the most David Bowie song. Of the David Bowie songs we've covered so far. Uh, but Cody has talked about David Bowie on this show a lot. So let's hear what he has to think about this one. This is arguably the worst David Bowie song I've heard. <sighs> like, I mean, this is with respect. I don't like David Bowie, right? So I respect what he does, but I don't like his music. So you know what I definitely don't like? Him doing like a Bruce Springsteen, like Billy Joel kind of impression like during the song. Like, I don't need this to be the Billy Joel that we're, like the Billy Joel, the David Bowie that we're getting. I just don't need that. Like, I, I just, I was so confused by this when it played. I was like, what? It's like Wes Anderson comes out and he does a Michael Bay movie. Like, what? <laughs> What? Hey, I understand you want to be different, but are you comparing direct... Billy Joel to Michael Bay? No, 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 no. I'm saying I'm picking something so drastically different. Okay, okay. Wes Anderson and Michael Bay couldn't be farther apart. Uh, Scorsese and uh, um, I'm terrible. Rennie Harlan. Yeah, like they're just not like a uh, Barry Levinson. Like those are just not. We're not on the same. Time. So was, overall. Yeah. Um, so yeah, young Amer- yo, American. I'm like, give it to Bruce. If you're gonna sound like him, just let Bruce Springsteen sing. Like he's trying to be the boss, and it's real weird. Like you actually, real I quick. know there's one that was earlier than this. I don't know what the last one was. That David Bowie, what song David Bowie's last song on the show was? But I feel was like I like that song better than this one. Was it Space Oddity? It was Space Oddity. Yeah, I, I like that song better than this one. Uh, Matt. Real quick, something I found out today. You want to know who one of the backing vocalists is in this song? First version. Luther Vandross. Luther Vandross oh. is one of the backing vocalists in this song. And that blew my mind figuring that's that crazy. out. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think that should be illegal. <laughs> He should have just given it to Luther. It's like, hey. Well, he shouldn't. Song. He just shouldn't be a backup singer. That's Wait, crazy. hold on. Really. Imagine Luther Vandross singing the, like this song. No, you're American. No, <laughs> like if he, if he does soulful, but if he does the no, no. There's a few okay. people that does this song justice. If not, why are we doing it? All right. Well, it sounds like you're not using a veto, which actually kind of surprises. Uh, again, day one, David Bowie's dead. That's disrespectful too. He, I think he deserves credit for what he is. I'm like, I never heard the song before. Like, it's not a song I hate. Like, it's just never one that it's just, it's just, it just seems like a weird imitation. I don't know. All right. Well, with that, we're going to move on before Cody can change his mind to number 125. What's Love Got to Do with It by Tina Turner? Uh, Brooklyn, you have this higher than I do. Yeah, this is uh, this is a fucking awesome song. I uh, did not get did not get in, in, into this until like a little bit later, like probably a couple of years ago. I think it might have actually been because of the list. It was another one that kind of got like got radio play, and it was just like it was white noise for a little bit. But then like realizing what this like what the song is about, I think that this is a top five bridge of all time. Um, 
especially like where Tina is coming from and how you feel like coming out of a relationship. Like I've been taking on a new direction, but I have to say, I have a thing about my own protection and it's, it scares me to feel this way. And like, it's, it can scare you from, from going out from what you thought was going to be the normal for, for a while. Um, and then even how it kind of ties back to the to the opening lines of like, you must understand that the touch of your hand makes my makes my pulse react, and like you take that as a, as a good way or, or a bad way. But I thought that this was this is the best example of taking hurt from a from a relationship and being like, no, I'm going to make something great out of this. I'm going to tell tell a story, and this is without even talking about like just the mix of this and like the the arrangement. I really like the. Like the, like the drum beat in it and like the synth and how it just kind of like sits on top of everything. And that's something I say a lot in these kind of songs. And then you have Tina just basically doing Tina Turner, like wailing into everything, especially when you get in, in, into that, into that key change. Um, but yeah, I just think this has a ton of heart. Um, it's one that every, like, if you're going through a breakup, you need to listen to the song because it, it, it lifts you up. Yeah, um, I, I would say everything that Brooklyn said is true. And I think the thing that puts it on my list personally um, is the instrumentation of the production, the mixing of it. Um, I think that the the uh, the choice of synth, perfect. That kind of gives that pan flute kind of vibe. Oh, I never like, thought of that. that. That makes sense, though. Yeah, and I kind of really like that aesthetic. It's one that doesn't get used enough, in my opinion. Um, and just, like, it's tight. The vocals are, like, really strong. Um, and, yeah, there's a lot of, like, lyrical choices that I really like. The, like, protection and direction rhyme is one of those that just, like, it's kind of like a magical rhyme. Um yeah, no, it's just it's just a really solid piece. I wish it kind of connected with me more than it does, but I understand like why and what makes it good. So, absolutely deserving spot on this list. Uh, let's go to Cody and get his thoughts on uh, what's love got to do with it. Absolute fire! This song is a certified like. I know why she gets so much. Like, if you think of the song that represents Tina Turner, it's probably Proud Mary, like, and I understand why, just because of her performance of it and everything. This song is so, in my eyes, I like the song so much better than that. Um, it's just, one, Tina's voice is like, it just sounds like she's been through some shit, and she has been through some shit, but, like, you can hear it in her voice. So a song like this, like... I think can only work with her because it's like, what's love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Like, and you hear the rasp of it, like, like a secondhand notion. Like, it's just like, who needs one when they're just going to throw you away and not deal with you? Like, and it's just like that important. What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it. Like, it's just, it's simplistic but it has so much like emotion behind every word she sings. And like, it's definitely like her past relationships and like everything that she's been thrown out. And it's, it's also one that's just less performative than she's like, you know, the dress flying and the heels and like going crazy. It's just, it's just her in a microphone, just going and letting, and I, I couldn't agree more. I don't know if top, like, cause I don't know. Brooklyn, that's Brooklyn's department with the bridge argument, but uh, I signed, I signed the petition if it's top five because it's such a, good, it's such a good song. Like this is another one of those sur fired. Like as soon as it, like I was listening to some of the songs, but this is the one I would like listen to twice, and then listen to the other songs, and then listen to this one twice because it's so good. All right, all right, Brooklyn. Aside from the Young American, three sixty five. Uh, Look, I was super honest when I say that it didn't connect with me, but I understand what makes it great. So uh, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I hope you get into a relationship that falls apart and you feel heartbroken, but uh, that's already because that would be rude. That would be rude to say, but like this song, it's just yeah. 
I have to get into a relationship first, Cody. So, ha ha ha, jokes on you. My All friend right. Andrew is single. If you would like to match the gem, please. Hi. They're moving to a new channel, though. So, hi. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> moving on to number one hundred twenty-four. Like five hundred bits. One hundred twenty-four. Blitz Creek Bop by the Ramones. Uh, Brooklyn, you had this higher than I did. This song is just fucking fun. I like it doesn't get killed on on re-listen, especially when you get into the little like pre-chorus part, like hey, oh, let's go shoot them in the back now. What they want, I'll, I don't know. I'm all like I love the line. I'm all revved up and, and ready to go. Uh, like just a small alliteration that, that they have in there, but it's just it's so fucking simple. And it's executed flawlessly. Like it's just, just the core, the chord structure of it. Um, also, like that that build up of the of the drums or whatever. Like the uh, like the hitting hitting the four tom and then then the snare. Not at the same time, but it has a nice a nice build to it. And like playing this in a crowd is is a no brainer because as soon as as soon as you say hey everybody's like oh i know what song they're doing and i know the words know the words to it so it's like it, it's very easy song to to grab to grab onto um yeah that's 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 where that's where it sits like i, I know it's been talked to death and like in in the punk punk echelons it's been on the list both times it's awesome i shouldn't have to say that anymore i don't think I think I may have the song a little high, to be honest with you. Um, I think it still should be in the 500, but I think it's more in the 400s, maybe like the 450s. Um, I get the cultural importance of this song. This song was basically kind of like the birth of punk uh, <laughs> when it comes. To so, music. so you're telling me when when it when it featured on Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, you didn't I, you didn't pop. somehow I knew somehow I knew I knew that that was the verse that was going to be brought up. <laughs> well, it was that and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, so it was just like the perfect perfect time frame. Um, <laughs> that was the first time I ever heard this song. Um, it, it does still have a really good energy, and it's got like a great like four on the floor kind of uh, kick drum, even though it's like hardcore. Um, I, this is this is one where the simplicity does kind of hurt it. It it's just kind of it kind of hits repetitive to a point where it does kind of like start to drag me out of it. Look. No, oh no. And you're muted, Cody. <laughs> he asked me how his connection was before we started. Um, bad. He's bad. I guess I can talk about this, um, right? Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I know. I know. I normally injury fish you in, but Cody, tell us how you feel. He might be back. I think he's back. I'm back, but he's muted, yeah. which is no, even better. Oh. oh. Oh, you're just laggy. Try it again. Better. No, <laughs> way behind. Okay, you guys uh, I'll talk go about on. It if you want to leave and come back. Yeah. You you talk about it, Cody. I'll refresh. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, yeah, uh, this song is fine. Um, I, I just think it's overplayed. Um, it's been like in a lot of medium and I think you know that you guys were referencing it's been like in so much stuff so like I hear it I would never go out of my way to put the song on like ever like if it played I'm not like hitting the skip button but I'm not seeking this song out it's just like that huh oh let's go come on like I get it it's but, fun but, like, but that's but it's kind of weird though because like AC and ACDC does Kind of the same thing, and like I like. Would you say the better same vocals, thing about maybe? Okay, yeah, yeah, better vocals. And maybe they just think about stuff like you know, back Being in born black, in the middle of a railroad. Back in black, you still shook me. Well, shook like, me well, a well, so like, like dynamite in particular. I feel like is is kind of that kind of does checks off the same things that what Street Bop does. ACDC is kind of the band you don't want your mom walking in and having you listen to, kind of. 
versus this song is just one song that you're just like, okay, like, oh, they're just having fun. But like, she was a fast machine. She kept her motor clean. Like, you don't want mama hearing that song, you know, from, you know, you know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All I'm right. Glad you're cool. back. I missed you. I appreciate that. So let's move on to number 123 on our combined list. That being Time of the Season by the Zombies. Uh, I'm going to be honest, Brooklyn. I'm surprised you have it higher than I do. So you go first. Uh, yeah. If I were to put like a, like kind of like a label or like what era this kind of represents, this represents the weird 60s. Like there's, there's a bunch going on, but it all kind of makes sense. Like the the very like jazz influence of, of of the drums like very similar to like ginger ginger baker and like ringo star and stuff um how wild the 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 keys and the organ uh get into near the end but then you have like they're really nice like those those two chords that, that, that the guitar plays um tom petty does kind of the kind of the same thing um but just like the resolve that that you get that you get in that and whatnot um but similar to how we we're talking about like tina turner with what's love got to do with it the the little like i think it's like the marimba that they're playing like the little do 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 um and just uh how how his voice kind of holds but it never really goes too far like it's never like pushing too much or it's never like kind of like being like hush and whatnot um but uh but yeah i that's what that's what i would say it's 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 just like weird 60s it's not doing like traditional pop stuff but it gets played a lot like a pop song um yeah this song this song is so much better than i listed it as uh this should be higher on my list um Rod Argent's keys on this, that keyboard solo goes hard. Um, and I do really love the, I, I, I don't know what it is, but it's like a hollow, like, do -doo -doo -doo, uh, do 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 uh, like, whatever that is, it's either I, him hitting the snare. I wonder or, if it's the same thing, like, you know the thing with like it's like the ball and like the almost like the block thing that like they use in yeah. crazy train. I wonder if they're hitting that but just not letting the bottom part ring. Possibly, but that that just adds like this little bit of extra texture to the instrumentation. Um and Colin Blundstone's voice on this. Dude, his voice is just in, like the tone and the color of it just works so perfectly for this song. Um, this is psychedelic rock at or psychedelic pop, like one of the two, at like its absolute best and finest. Um, yeah, no, this should this should be higher on my list, therefore higher on this overall list. To be completely honest with you, I can see I can see one twenty like one twenty three is fair. 350, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, 352 is definitely low, but I think anything above 150 is a win. All right, uh, let's go to Cody. What are his thoughts on uh, Time of the Season by the Zombies? Very similar to Under the Bridge. Um, iconic song, don't really pop it on all the time, but once you hear it, you're like, yep, know every word to it. Um, I'm glad neither one of you did the What's Your Name? Who's your daddy? I'm so glad that wasn't spoken. So we'll let Payson handle that. Appreciate <laughs> appreciate that. And so, like, it's like that beginning. What you guys were talking about, like, doom, 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 doom. like, it's so cool. Like, such a cool entrance. Like, such a good song. Like, it builds. It's it's psychedelic, but like not too weird. So it like gets the common man me uh involved so if it got too creepy and too weird i'd be like i'm out but it's like perfect the vocals match yeah it's just really it's just a really good song just really good song so good choice this is one of the few times that when it comes to music america got it right because this song flopped in england they almost oh, broke up wow and then this charted super high on the american charts a year that's later. so weird it's probably so. like their food scene they're just terrible <laughs> I, I will I will agree I I would I want to go to the UK and try all try all their food 
uh, well, I mean, just like the amount of fish and chips that I've cooked in Beans my life. Just to... No wonder they lost the war. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they lost the war. That was over before. Twice. Grilled tomatoes for breakfast. You're going to get your butt stomped. Like, <laughs> Blood sausage, though. Blood sausage. Also. No, You're, no, don't you no 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 don't try to help the Brits out by bringing up blood sausage. There's you may as well bring shot. up figgy pudding. There's not a yeah. shot that you're having blood sausage over breakfast sausage. No human no. would ever make that call. No one. No. And if you are, there's a place called you for you. It's behind bars <laughs> in jail. Go there tomorrow. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on before we anger any more British people He's watching this. Uh, <laughs> moving on to number one hundred twenty-two on the list, "Into the Mystic" by Van Morrison. Now, I want to preface something ahead of time because apparently there is a word in this song that is slowly starting to be seen as a slur. Um, so I just want people to understand that when it comes to this song and the time period that it was made in, I'm a little bit more forgiving of the use of it. So is, take that as you like want. The, the G word? Or what, yeah, the what's G the, word. That's... Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so take into time and context and just like understand it's not being used in the way that it that some people see it now which is why i'm okay with having it on my list that and the fact that this song fucking rules um this is how you talk about pre-chorus the bridge and the pre uh, the the pre-chorus for this song is perfect the way it just like builds into uh van morrison's howling vocals and the little things like the tambourine and like the horns and just the instrumentation on this is just absolutely fantastic there's so much soul but there's like a little bit of folk country a little bit of jazz it's just like an amalgamation of all of these different genres and it just sounds fantastic uh van morrison is giving easily one of his best vocal performances on a song and this one is just like aside from that one word has stood the test of time incredibly well um yeah so there's two little moments especially like in, in the guitar part that i, that I really want to really want to highlight one is just kind of like the main kind of like intro or the main or like the root of the song like the little like the just how he kind of like like moves off a third and then the like when the foghorn blows like the little like um and when that foghorn blows you know i will be coming home um yeah i have like a i have a complex feeling with with, with this song um like I, I love it, but it also like it brings you back to like a like a really like weird time to kind of to kind of think about. Um, but just like especially like like what what it's about and like kind of like starting a new chapter. I think looking at it now, I think I feel like it's more more about more about death more than about kind of like being being in love, especially like sailing off in, into the mix, mystic and like just like. Like I want to rock your soul, like just just like way back in the days of old. I think kind of hammers that point home. Um, old, uh, kind of hammers that point home a little bit, and then like mag then magnificently we will float into the mystic, and yeah, just kind of like your soul, like your soul ascending, ascending up to it. Um, I think the saxophone is also a little is something that doesn't really get talked about enough in it, just how effectively it's used, and then it's just like the do do. Do 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 like hitting hitting those little two notes, I think just adds a surprising amount of punch given given how light and kind of like romantic the song the song can be at times. Um yeah, I 
I I adore the song. It's such a pretty song to play. I just I love love the riff of it. Um, uh man, life life is hard sometimes. Cody, uh, let's go to Cody. That internet, buddy. That internet. Um, here's the question: Is um another song by Van Morrison anywhere higher, or is does it I think exist? This might be the last There's, Van Morrison. Have we talked about Moon Dance yet? I think we did, did because we? you were the only one to have Moon Dance. Right. Did we right. talk about the other one? Yes, we did. No. Brown Brown Eyed Girl. Yeah, we did. Yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we did talk about that one already. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. I thought we talked about it, but I wasn't sure. Okay, so then there's just no reason the song's higher than Brown Eyed Girl, in my opinion. I think the song's fine. I like his voice a lot. I enjoy it. But, like, when I have to compare the two from the same Mario as Brown Eyed Girl, it's just miles better, in my opinion. And this is just the common man saying, not for what you guys are pointing out. But overall, I didn't hate those songs. Um, question for Cody, especially given the new information now that that word is, I guess, a no longer okay word. Is Tyson Fury still called the? Yes, the, yes. he is. Yeah. Okay. Well, here, so yeah, whenever well, whenever Andrew said that, I was like, like there the was a, there was a fight pretty recently that that, that used that word. In, in twenty twenty three, you just have to be anything can make somebody. <laughs> And that's just where we're at, and you just can't. <laughs> it's minefields. You just gotta step and choose, and blah blah blah. Uh, as long as you don't quote it, I guess you're fine. But then, in some areas, you could quote it. I have no idea. Yeah, it's a weird time we're living. Everyone just it's it's a very new thing. Um, to keep me. on your toes. And keep on your toes. Yeah, exactly. So we're just gonna be careful. Uh, moving on, though. To number 121, I think one that Brooklyn and I are both kind of excited to talk about because it has not appeared on either version of the list. Oh, yeah. Feeling All Right by Joe Cocker. Brooklyn. The better B. people. Uh, <laughs> we, we, were talk- wow. we were talking about uh, Obla Di Obla Da in the chat a while ago. I'm getting to a point, though, because we were talking about how John Lennon was getting so mad. That's why he hits the piano so hard. I feel like I Joe Cocker is doing is doing kind of the same thing, but it's it's really cool because like because the lyrics obviously like feeling all right, like I'm not feeling that good myself. But there's just a I really like the like the the pretty kind of arrangement to it. But then there's this real kind of like dark like kind of think about it uh, setting for it. Um, if you've watched uh, Flight with Denzel Washington, it hits the emotions of this song perfectly. Like when he's coming out of the hotel room and he's like, he's drunk out of his mind and he has has the gla- glasses on. And it's just like, it's that masking uh, kind of feel. Um, I've definitely grown on this song since um, since we've been talking about it. Um, but yeah, I'm especially excited to talk about it, especially with with how it's used in the Ray Denzel movie, uh, Flight. But uh, but yeah, Andrew. Uh, I just want to. I'm just double check something. Uh, oh, that's the name of the band. Okay, cool. Because this is a cover um, of a song by a band called Traffic. Uh, there's a reason that we know this version and not the Traffic version, though. Because Joe Cocker was the king of covers. Um, plus, the blue-eyed soul of this man's voice. Woo! Man, that man could sing. Um, it may not have been the prettiest voice, but do could sing. Uh, but yeah, the dichotomy of the song is just so perfect. Because it's a song about pessimism, baby. This is absolutely a pessimist's go-to song. Um, but... Brooklyn's right. It is the kind of feeling where it's like, all right, I fucking hate my life, but you know what? We're going to go out today and try to make the best of it. Uh, <laughs> I feel it all. <laughs> I'm not feeling too good myself. Um, but yeah, no, the dichotomy of the instrumentation versus the lyrics is just really smart, really well done. Um, and as I said, the power behind this song, and I'm not just talking about like the power of the lyrics, I'm talking about the actual 
power, how everyone's just playing their instruments as hard as they fucking can towards the end. Uh, and it just plays off like toward the end incredibly well. Um, yeah, this is just an amazing piece. Uh, Cody, you feeling all right after uh, getting this far? Yeah, the better Beetle. Um, I'm glad to see him on the list again. Uh, Joe Cocker, I mean, just put so much Beetle stuff to shame, in my opinion. I think they're a good band, but like, let's be real. Let's be real. Um, this song is so much. Uh, this song's really fun. His voice is just so, so good. Like, I. It's kind of unfair. Like they gave him so much talent, and you know, could have could have like taken like thirty percent and blessed other people. So you know, <laughs> overall. Uh, but yeah, I think he I think he did a fantastic. The song's so good. Uh, Brooklyn being higher, I think I'd lean with probably Bar on this one. But yeah, really, okay. Yeah, I like it. I just it's not like an automatic. I think it's fun. I just. I don't know if it breaks a lot of like I think I like some of Joe's covers a little bit more. Yeah. All right. Like there's one just I think is crazy, but we can talk about that later. The fact is it the fact that he's the the best Beatle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, not on this list, sadly. Uh, nope, Joe. Joe play. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, write a song. All right, we're gonna throw it right here. Right I'm from Liverpool. Ringo. Yes. I'm John. I'm Paul. I'm George, and I'm Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're right. Beatles. Yeah. Moving on to number 120, "Common People" by Pulp. Uh, the version that we sent to you was the album version, specifically. Uh, Brooklyn, you had this higher. Um, yeah, so I kind of like this for the similar reasons that Andrew likes I Melt With You. Um, like the just how the synth is 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 produced and whatnot. Um, and I really like songs like I think it's more so for like eight minute epics or something like that really kind of build tension. This kind of does the same thing in about six minutes or so. Um how it really just builds off of off of one chord progression and they just turn up the dial ever so much uh throughout like he's he's wailing uh pretty 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 near the end this also gets a ton of potential because i think the song would be crushed live um especially like if you look it up look it up on youtube and any live live performances of it um i i think that just would be a really cool energy uh to be a part of uh shout out to scott harvey i believe he's like we had him on whenever this was on the list and he was like, like song. Favorite song, favorite song on here, um, but yeah, it takes things that I generally critique about '80s synth pop, and it's like you can actually make a pretty good song out of it. Um, yeah, so this is one of those songs where it's the construction of it that I think really, really works. Um, I think it's just a song about this rich girl dating this guy who's just like a commoner and her being like so obsessed with common people and what they do. <clears throat> it's sort of like in Aladdin when Jasmine is like, I don't want to be in this palace. I want to be out there. on folk like that kind of vibe. Uh, and then him taking her to do like normal people things like going grocery shopping and shit like that. And then, him kind of spiraling out of control <laughs> it's like seeing all the things and the repetitiveness that the common people have to go through um and it just kind of descends into chaos which that's just such a really great idea i love that idea um so yeah i think this is just a really smartly crafted song but cody do you want to sing along with the common people Nope. <laughs> I, I, think, I think you'd all understand this is not a Cody song by any means. I didn't think like, this was. We talked about this before you came on. Um, not worth a veto. Um, because I think it is constructed well as a song. It is just the complete opposite of what kind of song like I like or enjoy. So like nope. 
nope. Just it just sounds like we're just draining. Like just stop. And it maybe not it. take it's just, it's being completely draining being a normal person. Maybe it wouldn't take six minutes if he just spoke clearly. And <laughs> drag. He's British. That's racist. Back to the excuse. I don't care that you're British. You lost the war. Speed it up, Junior. That's why you lost. Dude, that, that Son frozen of a shot that he just took, he just completely got frozen. It was a great head shot. Like, he could put that. <laughs> like, it was good. Like, he should just keep that look. All right, how do I do? I would, I, would, I would like to audition, audition for this role. Here's my here's my head shots. How am I doing? Am I back? Am I good? You're, you're, yeah, yeah, you're good. You're, okay, cool. cool you're cool, cool, you. Cool. Yep, that's me. That's me. I'm me. Uh, all right, moving on to number 119 on our list. Crazy by Gnarls Barkley. Uh, Brooklyn, you had this higher. Okay, the the thing that I that was like, oh, like it's a genius fucking move. Uh, I believe that this is produced as well by by Pharrell Williams. And if you ever learned uh, one of his, oh, it's not produced by Pharrell Williams. Danger Mouse. Danger. Oh, it is by Danger Mouse. Oh, then he does kind of the same thing though, because because Pharrell Williams has a signature where he does like a five count into the song, and I, he's doing bass three yeah. four. Yeah, he's doing the same thing. I think that's really kind of cool because it gives you enough time to realize like what song is, is going on. Um, but then you really get into like CeeLo Green's delivery and then you learn kind of like what the song is about. Like it's about his time um, being, in, being in a gang and that this song is really just about like a conversation that he had had with, with Danger Mouse go, going on. Um, there, there's a really cool like soft moments in here. Like the, like, the harmony that CeeLo provides, like in the chorus, it's kind of like bring you back down from the chorus, just because the chorus is so bombastic. Uh, given like the strings and like hit and his kind of his kind of fal- falsetto and whatnot, but then that drum beat is just still kicking despite everything. Like the song really kind of slows down, but then the drum beat's like, no, no, like we're gonna keep like the keep the feel of of this um, as well. Uh, I think it's a it's a 2000s staple. I think every I think everyone our age uh, knows this song from top to bottom, uh, and especially like the line like "Who do you Who do you think you are?" and like the little "Ha ha ha, bless your soul." Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's a great time. Yeah, um, I I remember when this song came out. It was one of those moments of Ooh, what the hell is this? Um, because sorry, if I because I, if I remember correctly, like the music video, this is kind of like a worse, like a Rorschach kind of painting, and Watchmen had just come out, like I think a couple years before, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it definitely was the Rorschach painting thing, though, because yeah. I remember watching that video on loop. Um, I think the thing that makes this song as good as it is is Danger Mouse's production and the instrumentation. That kick drum. Holy God, that kick drum is just absolutely perfect because every once in a while, it just like adds that extra beat in there um, and it just really creates this really interesting sound. The choir vocals are just so epic and they're just so well-placed. Um, yeah, it, it's just a sonic wonder of a song. Um, and then, yeah, CeeLo Green is, like, really good on it as well. And the lyrics are unique and interesting and fresh. Um, but, yeah, it's it's the sonic landscape and just how well it's produced. And it's just, like, puts it head and shoulders above a lot of other things that came out in that time. In my opinion, easily the best thing that Danger Mouse has ever produced. But, uh, Cody, what do you think of this song? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Does it drive you crazy? <laughs> You're walking mean. Okay. Um. Uh. I love this song. I think the song is absolutely great. This is one of the ones I consider like possibly moving up. I think it's so good. Um. I don't know what award it won, but I remember it may not be for the Grammys, but like it was Typical. something. I think it's it something was record that, of the year. It's something that won, and I was like, really, this song won. But it's, it has stood the test of time since it's come out. It can be played anywhere that I'm ever at, and everybody will automatically sing with it. It is. 
So this song won Best Urban Alternative Performance in 2007. It was nominated for Record of the Year. Does anybody want to guess what Dixie Chick song it lost to? Oh, it's uh, I'm not ready to make nice. I'm not yeah. ready to make nice. Yeah. Um, mm, 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 mm. I just the song is so good, so good. It's a staple of the 2000s, but it's still like, still so good. Like his voice is crazy. Like especially when he goes, maybe crazy, and then possibly like how he sings out possibly. Like yes, like he just works. It just works so well. So yeah. Great choice. All right. Let's move on to number 118, then, on our combined list. That being Fortunate Son by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Okay, this will be the end of the list. This will be at the very end. Just, I want to use that right now. Oh, this fucking course. It's e- oh, TCR, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it at the end, then. We're I was like- saving it. If this song was at the end, it would not have been used. But since it is sitting here, it will be at the end. There's no shot. All right, well, let's move on to what is now the new 118 on the list, Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, Brooklyn, you have this higher than I do. Uh, yeah, this is just, it's a really, really good job. Similar to, similar to how we're talking about, like, uh, John, Josh Fuscianti from the Chili Peppers. He's heavily inspired, inspired by Jimi and just how he maneuvers through that opening opening lick and the really cool moment of like i think it's the the glockenspiel andrew that you, you correctly identified last time um because it's hitting it and the guitar are hitting the exact same notes but just, just at different octaves so it kind of fits fits in uh with everything um but then the but then like the the best part of it and then people are starting to talk more about it now is is the experience like the, the the backing band like the drums are part of what makes every Jimi Hendrix song so great just of how much space there is to kind of to kind of fill out in it um but then you like this similar to like common people and how it just it kind of builds up and like his guitar just gets heavier like almost into like almost getting into like shoegaze territory um with it and whatnot but just like the yeah like the the dichotomy i guess of how wild the song gets but then again how timid jimmy is throughout most of the song he doesn't really go above and beyond like he does with like with like voodoo child or like purple haze yeah so i normally i think i said this the last time that we talked about this song normally i hate when I'm like, describe to me why this song is good. And someone just goes, the vibes. And I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is 1,000% a Shed song. It's oh, absolutely yeah. a Shed song, yeah. But th- I feel just specifically designed for that kind of atmospheric vibe. And it does such a good job of it because it's just like tightly played. Uh, melodically, it's still catchy and it's still sticky. Jimmy still sounds fantastic, um, but it does kind of sound like you're floating away on a cloud or like on a lazy river, and it just it just feels good to listen to. Um, I can't say too much else about why I love this song, other than just like how incredible the band is and the production and all that stuff, which is why it's in the 300s for me. But it's one that I can't help but say, yeah, it just sounds great. Um, But Cody, what are your thoughts? Were you carried away? Did you experience this? Listen. The Dallas Cowboys. (laughs) The New York Yankees. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) Name gets you so far. Ah, uh, okay. Jimi Hendrix, great talent. Awesome thing. No. No, no, no. Like, this song does not even... Like, you're right. This is one of those songs that if I ask a bunch of people that I don't trust, hey, recommend me a song, and they pick this, and then after I listen to it, I go to them, like, what? The vibes, man. Do you get the vibes? I want to put my car through their house. Like, <laughs> that answer for things and I hear it so much it's like when every time one of those people try to give me advice that they feel another year taken off of my life 
It's like when I recommend movies, I'm like, didn't you just enjoy the vibes? What? That's not a that's not a watching issue. I don't vibe to any what? I do I look like a vibes guy? I'm the anti vibe guy. So this song, automatically not a Cody movie. It's not a not a Cody song, movie or song. Not a song. Okay. Little but wings fly keep, somewhere else. But we're keeping it on. Okay. You're running you out know, of veto time. I, so. I, 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 you can you imagine that clip of you assholes going around dropping that I put I kicked off Jimi Hendrix? <laughs> Jimi yes. Hen- I won't be able to do anything in this community anymore. Yeah, I'm smarter than <laughs> David Bowie and Jimi Hendrix. Could have been <laughs> but I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to be the face of that. <laughs> All right, moving on to number 117 on the list. Uh, the Message by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's really just Melly Mel. Um, so I had this higher. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I think I may have it a little too high. Um, I think that there's still a lot that really works well. I think the instrumentation and the production is really strong. They took a lot of different things and they kind of just like made their own thing out of them. And it sounds great. Melly Mel, his delivery is awesome. It's spot on. Um, once again, it's another song that uses a slur. Um, I'm a little less forgiving of it this time, but once again, time period setting. I, I understand why they were using it. Um, but there is a lot of things talked about in this song that are still prevalent today. Aside from aside from that slur, most of this song has aged like wine. Um, just and even the little things that get brought up, just like garbage, just like cluttering the streets. That's still a thing too. Like it is a deeply personal song, and just like the frustrations of just like how the world is looking and turning out. Like, don't push me because I'm close to the edge and I'm just trying not to lose my head is such an immediate prevalent line. Um, Yeah. So would it be a little bit lower on my list? Now it would be. But still, it's a very important and well-made song. Um, Yeah. I, I like the... I'm going to do something very Brooklyn. I'm going to kind of compare this to a sandwich. I like the bread of this. It has... <laughs> you know, it, I, I like I like what it's trying to hold in. The things that it has in it, though, uh, like, there's some, like... There's some, like, like three-day-old tomato here that just gets worse if you sit it, if you let it sit out for, for any longer. Um, they use, like... Like Sobe's brand may like no name brand mayonnaise on this, and it's just like uh, like Hellman's is right there. You could you could have just grabbed it, um, it's but no, I like it. yeah, but I liked like the kind of like the anthology almost kind of as- aspect of it, where like it's these different kind of stories of of kind of people struggling. I feel like Ice Cube kind of took took some some inspiration from this from with him making um, today today was a good day. I also hate that line. Fuck that line. Uh, it's on like whenever I think of the song, it's the first line that that, that comes to mind. And yeah, unfortunately. And the more that I think about it, it's like this should be like a four hundreds kind of kind of song. Especially looking at like even just like in in the songs we're talking about today, what it's what's in that same kind of kind of grouping. The other thing though, because I would almost argue that there's two cringe lines here. Obviously, that one. But there's one in the next verse. Um, sometimes I think I'm going insane. I swear I might hijack a plane. Now, I'm not from America. I'm not a history major. But I believe there was an event that happened a little bit ago that's just like, oh, not sure if this song sits as well. And I'm surprised that doesn't get The guy who tried to kill more. Richard Nixon, right? What was the first cringe? John Wilkes Booth. What was the first? Um, oh. What was the first cringe line you said? The one that he uses a slur on. Eating out of garbage pails used to be a blank hag. And yeah. it rhymes with hag. Yeah. Gotcha. Anyways, yeah, on to Cody. Because I, I have nothing else to say. Um, this song is uh, ruined. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Song movie called Happy Feet. Um, <laughs> uses the line, <laughs> don't push me I'm close to the edge. Um, so, yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Um, I'm not a fan of that. And then um, I think it's a fine song. But I think way too high overall. Yeah, I think yeah, there's yeah, very yeah. similar songs from that time frame that um, that could be better. I'm going to be Same honest with you. I, I I kind of agree with you. Um, and there's a few songs from that time period from this genre that I do think, if I had thought about it more, would have made it onto the list. So. Well, that's fair. Uh, especially when it comes to like De La Soul. Oh my God, I, I'm so mad at myself for not putting any De La Soul on this list at all. <laughs> like that's that's a crime. It's a crime. I'm you have a veto. Those. All right. I know, and uh, I didn't think about it. All right, just let's move on. Uh, moving on to number 116. Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. Um, I have this one higher somehow. Uh, so, yeah, um, I'm trying to remember the dude's name. Brooklyn, you may be able to help me out. Sid Barrett? Yeah, Sid Barrett. Yeah, Sid Barrett. This is a, this is about Sid Barrett. This yeah. is about, like, a lost friendship, um, especially when it's a friendship that's lost because of, A, drugs, and B, mental health. Um, it's just a really, like, earnest longing yearning song about just like missing your friend um and it's just really well made but the lyrics are still up front and center when it comes to the impressive instrumentation uh and if i'm remembering this story correctly while they were making this song sid barrett showed up to the recording studio and I, I believe think, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I think that may have like really helped with, um, oh, who does the vocals for this one? I, I had it and I lost it. Um, uh, it? Oh, David um, Gilmore. Uh, yeah. David Gilmore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause you can, I think the thing that really helps put the song where it is on my list is his vocals on this because you can feel the emotion just pulsing through him as he's singing these words. And it's just a really intense emotional piece. Um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that I have this lower, lower than you, because this is kind of, this kind of screams, um, everything about a song that I like, especially the intro, um, the, the, particular detail of them using a 12 string guitar i think it just gives it a nice a nice sense of body um and really kind of kind of some depth and then it also really gives the like the the solo guitar a chance to shine during like whenever they're like they're going back through the going back through it a, sec, a second time and then they're like he's kind of filling in the the, the, the empty spots in it as well um also the chord progression of of this is uh is really great uh wonder wall kind of steals it a, a, a little bit but it, or it definitely takes some some inspiration from it uh i think the line that everybody goes goes back to we're just two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl year after year i think it's one that everybody kind of kind of kind of gravitates to i think it's kind of crazy because because i was about to make a joke about them thinking of the idea for the song and it was like oh Kiss did this. Kiss did the same thing where they were heavy, 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 and like let's make Beth. And then they realized this came, this came out before Beth. So now my joke is going to be, hey, K hey, Kiss, we should now we should make a new song. Well, Pink Floyd did a power ballad. Why don't we do one? Let's make let's make Beth. It's good, but it's nowhere near Wish You Were Here. And I think that's that's the that's the stamp stamp that it has is these heavier kind of out there bands are able to tone it down, and it really just shows range. Uh, Cody, what do you think of Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd? A song that I don't, I've heard, don't really know much about before listening to this week. Good song. Really good song. Um, 
you can definitely feel the heartbreak in this song, like the missing a friend kind of vibe throughout it. You can just his vocals are really good. I'm not a big Pink Floyd fan personally. Like I wouldn't say I'm like not a I don't like them. I just don't listen to them. So kind of surprising. But you're I kind of got the vibe because I was like, this is Pink Floyd because it doesn't sound like a, what I think of Pink Floyd. Like this is like really soft. And then the Beth comparison that Brooklyn just made is like, makes sense. Makes sense. Like when they dial it back and they don't do what they're normally supposed to, like it's you get different things like this. So yeah, good song. And definitely perfect for a list like this for people to go check out and listen to. So yeah, if you haven't, please do. It's yeah. incredible. All right. Moving on to number 115, Everyday People by Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, I'm going first on this one. This is one of those songs where, like, I immediately resonated with this song. Sure, there are some silly moments, especially in, like, there is a blue bird that doesn't like the red bird that doesn't like the green bird. Like, that kind of, like, children's rhyme kind of cadence. Yeah, it's a little silly. But I think that it's to point out how silly fucking racism is. <laughs> like, it's fucking stupid, guys. Come on. Let's be honest. Um, and I, I just love how, like, soft, like, the verses are for Sly. And then we get into the chorus and he just hits that one note. And it's just a beautiful transition, and it's incredible. It's one of my favorite moments in any song ever made. Um, and that note that he hits is pro it's an all timer for me. Um, it's short, it's sweet, it's groovy as hell, it's funky, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Good message, powerful vocals, incredible instrumentation. It's just an all timer for me. Um, yeah, I I have a question. I guess for and Andrew Cody, has this ever been used to close out a movie or for like the end credits? It's got to have. It because it because that's like that's the I know it's a, I know it's a bad word God. in the show. God, <laughs> it's yeah. That's that's the vibe that that, that it gives off. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's such a there, there, there's such a, a resolve, resolve to it. Like you, you kind of like you want to walk out of you want to walk out of the theater to this song because it makes you feel, feel so good. Um, it's one of the rare instances where uh, like the bass line is is just one note and it's just so goddamn goddamn effective. Also, the, like like the line that has definitely stuck with me, uh, like different strokes for different folks, so on and so on, and Scooby Dooby Doo. Like like how Andrew was talking about like the song being silly, yet when bare naked ladies do it. It's, oh, this is this is uh, this is the Wiggles fruit salad yummy yummy. Mind you, this is a much more relevant top topic, and I and I, like I definitely give it more appreciation given how they're able to kind of uh, break down racism into this like children's esque kind of kind of delivery. So I do appreciate I do appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I would I think even in saying that I would probably I think I have it too low. And then yeah, we would even get even get higher, which is crazy because I because I also put this in like the radio conversation of like it can kind of get killed, but doing like hearing hearing Andrew talk about it specifically, it's like yeah, okay, I understand why it's why he has it at one hundred seven. Uh, I also just want to make one little adjustment to what I said: racism and classism. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Because there's also the poor but poor bird that doesn't like the rich bird. So like. Yeah, all that. Just stupid. Uh, Cody, what do you think of everyday people? We've had common people. We've had everyday people. We're just about the people. Here's the thing. And this could be an insult. <laughs> I don't mean it as an insult. I got TV show theme song vibes from this song. I get it. Yeah. Okay. I definitely got it from like the 80s, 70s, like that variety of like, this should open... A quirky like, like oh, there's a white neighbor. This could open the Jeffersons again. There's a white neighbor. <laughs> a white neighbor. How are they going to work? And like, working for the rich boss. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Two one characters one. that don't get along going shoulder to shoulder. 
<laughs> and like somebody sits there at one point and is like, uh, <laughs> everyday people. And like corny look at the thing in this song plays. Um, didn't hate it. Uh, listen, if you thought Bare Naked Ladies was the only thing safe, this is corny as shit. Like that Scooby Dooby, that stuff is just, I'm. Um, you had good stuff, and then you throw some weird crap in there. Like, we need to fill this. What are we? Bo, 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 what? Like, go so, sit, sit in the lab. Listen, figure out a different lyric for that. Don't be dumb. Okay, hold on. I want to talk about this just like real fast because no, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I can't remember which member it was that was interviewed. Or actually, it may have been like one of their songwriters. Um, was like they taught me something really important, and it's that. When the groove is good enough, the words don't fucking matter, which is why you have like body ah in the that's September. a trash take. That's a trash well, take. That's, that's earth, wind, and fire rules for you. I, I will yell at them too. Trash. <laughs> All right, let's move on to number one. Just a fill 114 Waterloo Sunset by the Kings. Um, yeah, this is probably like the most bar thing that's come up today. <laughs> like you listen to this, and if you were like, "Who put this higher on their list, Brooklyn or Bar?" I feel like ninety-eight percent of people would be like, "Bar." Um, it wasn't even in consideration who put this song as high as they did. <laughs> I listened to this and I said, "This has gotten B Brooklyn to have this is fine," but I knew who was going to have this higher, and it was a hundred percent you. I'd have cashed that bet ten out of ten times. No, oh. you would have made that bet the same way that you would have put a bet on the Cowboys Panthers game. Let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> Um, so there is, it's just an utterly charming song. Um, it's really simple. Once again, it's kind of got like a nursery rhyme kind of like melody to it. But when you compare that to the lyrics and just the, you know what this kind of reminds me of? is the Paddington films where it's just so charming with how it's doing it, that it pulls it off incredibly well. Uh, it's simplistic, but there's, there, there's just a delight around that simplicity. Um, yeah. It's just, when you combine it with the, the lyrics that have these wonderful images that are written in there, I just can't help but just really like it and enjoy it every time I listen to it. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Paddington because do you remember who we had on to talk about this one? Because this was in like the top 25 for... Yes. Yes, it was number yeah. like 12 or something like that. Yeah. Do you remember who we had on to talk about this song specifically? One of his favorite songs of all time, Zach Ford. Yeah, Zach Ford, yeah. Um this song has a has a has an interesting place when making the list. I knew how much Zach loved the song. I know how much you love the song, and I was like, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna set this back a little bit, and we're gonna we're gonna listen to it again. We're listening to it a bunch of times and figure and figure out what what it is." Here's the conclusion that I've kind of come to. It kind of takes elements of both the Beatles and the Beach Boys. It does kind of a happy medium of of those. It has like the George Harrison kind of style guitar. There's definitely like the Ringo feel of the drums, but then you get these really nice, like kind of like call and answer vocals of like, like, like especially when I say like Waterloo Sunset, Sunset's fine. And um, just, yeah, like the really, like the kind of like falsetto uh, that he, that he has in the voice. But then like, like this set, this, like just looking at the lyrics, it seems like a it seems like a John song, like a like like a John Lennon song, like quirk like quirky, um, but it, it's it's very very pretty, like it's a kind of like a like a walk in the park Saturday morning kind of uh kind of feel. I uh, won't we'll use the the V word here, um, but yeah, I appreciate it. It's a it's a fun time. I think the Beatles song that I actually might most compare this to is "Here Comes the Sun." Because I can like, see that, yeah. It's just kind of got that picture book imagery 
that's just drenched in it. Um, but Cody, what do you think of Waterloo Sunset? This is one that I can see going like any which way with you. This is going to be the shortest thing I've ever said on the show. You guys have literally stolen every point that I was ever going to make <laughs> on the show, ever. I literally echo everything you just said. From the Beatles to the Beach Boys to like, I had them all trained. You covered it. Good song. Good song. Definitely. Nice, nice vibe song. You know what I'm saying? But the vibes, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Producer, man. I appreciate you stepping over my joke with my own joke. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I'm not frozen. All right, cool. <laughs> so moving on to number 113, Doctor My Eyes by Jackson Brown. Brooklyn had this higher. Okay. Okay, this is one of the instances where I really wish I had a piano because the intro of this is so cool. But I'm going to do it on, on guitar here. Um, I just really like how... So, like, when you play on a piano, on the left hand, you're just you're just playing F, which is, like, which is just, like, the root note of it, and you're hitting, hitting the octaves of it. But then with your right hand, you are hitting different notes that... That are that are chords in, individually, but also fit in with with the key with the key or whatever. So it's just like little. And just I really like songs that are able to hold the root note, but then do some like really cool things up up top. And uh, I just think it just does a really good job of building up building up the intro. Um, and then especially how it kind of ramps up because the intro is how it has like this hold or whatever, but the Jackson Brown because in it's like very kind of like bop, bop, like doctor, my eyes have seen the years. Um, and then you also like, you kind of get in, get into the song and it's like, it's being, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Andrew, you go, you go for a second and I'll figure out what it was I was going to say. You're muted. Okay. Uh, so, this is one of the ones where it is the instrumentation and the melody that really do it for me. Um, plus, some of the imagery in the lyrics are just, like, really, really smart. Jackson Brown kind of had a habit of, like, writing this song again over and over and over, but this is always like the best version of that song. Um, and the things that I think actually really tied together is that piano, that piano that drives throughout the entire song, just like the, the chords that it chooses are just like really pleasant to the ear. Um, and then that guitar solo at the end, just like really creating like this new piece of like ear candy to listen to and still keep you wrapped in it. Um, it yeah, this is one that Jackson Brown apparently like worked on for hours and hours and hours to get it right. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard this, like the story about it? Like, or it's on it's on the Eagles documentary. Yes. Um, yeah, so like Glenn, like like Glenn Fry lived lived above him, and he would hear him just doing the intro for months, and he's like, "What is the song gonna be?" And it turned into this. And I love when songs like it, it's songwriting is really cool because like you can you can make a song in like ten minutes or even on the fly. Rappers do it a lot with freestyle, but then you have like Bohemian Rhapsody or ones like this. I take like six months to get right. And I like I love I love the the variance in that. Uh, were you able to think of the thing you were uh, looking for? Yeah, uh, this song is oddly about PTSD and about kind of like seeing all all the all the moments and whatnot. It's like, well, like how do I how do I go on with it? And especially like the verse of like because I've wandered through this world and and as each moment has unfurled, I've been waiting to awaken from from these dreams. So there's like. You're not really sure what it is. He's pretty. He's kind of. He's kind of vague about what exactly it is. But um, I thought it was just. It was just really cool to kind of hide hide that. And again, another another very uplifting song. Like you play this very in a crowd, jolly. and and every like all like my mom and dad would dance the hell out of this song. 
Uh, Cody, what did you think of Dr. My Eyes by Jackson Brown? Um, I like the song a lot. Uh, I understand it's the very first words in the song. I don't know if I could tell you the title of the song as many times as I listen to it. I understand that it's said all the time, but it's just one of those songs that it's just, I enjoy. I know nothing else about it. I've heard it. I've never played it myself, but I've heard it in different aspects. Fantastic song. Absolutely great song. Deserving of this list for sure. All right, let's move on to uh, number 112 on the list, what was going to be the last song that we talked about, Merry Go Round by Casey Musgraves. Uh, yeah, I made the 100% correct choice. Y'all are correct. <laughs> What is wrong with this group and Musgraves? Like, what are we doing? I'm not you saying will, she's bad, but what are we doing? You will show respect to Miss Musgraves. Are we trying to get a date with this woman? What are we doing? Like, you she's are. not even one of the group. Like, what are... This is we had Tina Turner. <laughs> and Tina Turner has to go oh, oh, by Casey. Dare you. Casey's walking past her. Get out of my face. What are we doing? <laughs> what who had that hire? Who had this hire? You did not have to do that. You knew you did not have to do that. How could you have done no that? No one wants to answer the question. Can you live with yourself? I have this highest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, okay, look. The uh, the first time I ever heard this I want to use my fucking veto just to be an asshole at this point for the <sighs> The first time I heard this song, my you mom came my mom came to me saying, "You have to listen to this song. It's hilarious." And I sat down and I listened to it, and I said to my mom, "That's the, one of the saddest songs I've ever heard in my fucking life." <laughs> What is wrong with you? Um, I think that the I think that the the keyboard Cody, dude, oh, here, somebody here. has song on. Yeah, I got it. Um, I think the keyboard having that like it sounds like a merry-go-round. The circular like repetition of the of the banjo creating this kind of like circle of just like despair from of being from a small town where there's like a lot of expectations on who you should be um it's kind of the polar opposite of small town by john mellencamp in that sense um it's just like if you're not in the front row of church you're a whore it's like that kind of thing and it kind of like really resonates with um me being from like a smaller suburb kind of area where like everyone went to church and everyone was happy and like yeah like we're this is such a great beautiful little town that we don't like look at the the, the underbelly of depression that, that's kind of in there mama's hooked on mary k brother's hooked on mary jane and daddy's hooked on mary two doors down just like no one's fucking happy in this small town um and i think that it's just like the chorus is one of the most interesting choruses I've ever heard in a long time because you think you know where the melody is going and then suddenly it changes. It takes like a left turn. Um, this merry go round and round and round we go. It keeps going. Um, yeah, this is just like a, a smartly written piece and I think it's just like incredible to listen to. So... I when the Cody was like, what are you guys doing? And I was like, you're gonna be shocked, but what I have to say, um, this has skyrocketed. Um, yeah, let's go. Like, like this is a th this is a for sure top 75 song, maybe even like top 50. I like I fucking okay, ho ho. <laughs> let let me get let me get into it first. First of all. I I agree with Andrew. I really like really like, like the ban the banjo in it. It just it, like it hits the root note for one second, but then it also has some really cool moments of tension. But like the, but the lyrics and what this is about, this hits home for me. Especially like if you ain't got to get to my twenty one, you're probably gonna die alone. At least that's what tradition told you. Um, in my like in in my previous relationship, there were so many people being like like even like even after like a couple of months, it was like. When are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? When are you going to have kids? And it was tiring to tell people, like, there's a good chance that we, prob that we probably won't. 
or that we probably can't. And like, that's just something like, it's a generational thing, but it's, it's a message that really needs to be pushed that like, it's okay to not have kids. It's okay to not be able to like, people need to realize like that that's, that is a, that is a gift and that it's really something that can't be taken for granted because when you do like you go into the spiral spiral of of this song the wordplay of mary as well i think is just really fucking fucking incredible um the second verse second verse as well there's really there's two lines in particular so we hold on to high school love so we don't end up like our parents it's you don't realize it until much later in life but the the things that you like you witness your your parents doing um you hold on to them and they become like a, they become a muscle reaction at times because whether it was good or bad, that was the standard. That was, that was the norm. It was like, okay, like these things happen. They, they kept, they kept on going. So like, obviously like they're, they're okay to do. But then, then the thing that I, that I really like is how it, how the last line kind of ties the song together. Cause it's like Jack and Jill went up a hill, Jack went down on booze and bills and Mary had a, and Mary had a little, little lamb. Mary just don't give a damn no more. And I, it can be kind of seen as a bit, as a bit of a write off because like Jack and Jill are cut your characters are not really mentioned. It just kind of fits with like the nursery rhyme aspect of it. But I think it ties so well to the first verse of it because it goes back to the message of like having kids doesn't really matter because like Mary just don't give a damn no more. You can have a kid and it's like a lot of people have that to kind of like change things. It doesn't necessarily change things. And I think that's something that needs to be reminded of and brought up. I know, sorry, like we were talking about, talking about it before this, this list in particular gets, is like very fucking heavy. And this is like, this is the best song of, of, of the list by far. Um, but I know that Cody's Cody's not in the same boat. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave on this high note while I can. And just real quick to add on to what we were both saying, it's, it's about breaking traditional gaps. So Cody, go ahead. Say what you want. You had to interject with it's breaking traditional gap. Yeah. She makes that very clear. At the beginning. Listen, I have no problem with the messaging of the song. The messaging is fine. I live in a smaller town than probably both of you combined. I yes, understand yeah. the rules. I understand uh, the rules of tradition. It. Well, how many's in your town? Uh, I there was five, like a thousand, maybe in our town. Okay, maybe you have me beat. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Here, here's the issue. Ah uh, no. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, show that was as successful as this song is. Let's be real. Okay, listen. She she is. This message is good, but I'm sorry. Message gets you so far. I don't think her voice is incredible by any means. I have a lot of worry about Andrew's mother at this point, because if she listened to three seconds of this song and said this is hilarious, that's terrifying. Like, what are you laughing at? I'm confused. Um. It's an important message, but I'm just, I'm so, this is the second Casey Musgrave song that has popped up on this list, and I'm confused just as much in the second time. I just feel like I'm not one of those, I think I'm talking, that's, that's even crazy. Uh, no, 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 I, I had one, but it was at like 490. Oh, it didn't oh okay. Like well, it seems like you guys are just hooked on Casey Musgrave, and that's fine. Yeah. But listen, she can't hold a candle to some country singers. I'm sorry, she just can't, especially female country singers. And there are still important messages out there. Should have vetoed that. I should have just ripped your guys' heart out right now. But I, I'm nice. I'm nice. I want this holiday season. I hope you remember. I'm nice. But wow, wow. This is going to close the list with the list that we just had. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Look, the math, the math says what the math says. Like I don't make the rules here. Listen, I've yeah, done a show with should. a bunch of math too. It's stupid. I get it. But man. Be bad. All right. Be bad. Let's let's talk about the song that Cody thankfully uh, moved up to the end of the list. Fortunate is done by Creedence Clearwater Revival. Yes, it's overused to hell and back in every movie about Vietnam ever made. Let's stop using this Hollywood, but doesn't take away from how incredible the song is. That guitar that opens it up, it's oddly patriotic like oddly patriotic but in a kind of condescending way um 
Plus, I love the drums in this. The the way that the, it opens up with those drums, it it just like a good rollick to it. Um, John Fogarty is pissed the fuck off in this song, and he is gonna let you fucking know it. Uh, yeah, it's just, and just the way that he like the even from the first line, just like some folks are born made to wave the flag, like just instantly, just like catches your ear, grabs you by the shirt collar, and says, "Fuck it." Fuck it all. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just a righteous piece with like just perfect instrumentation, wicked vocal performance, cutting lyrics. It's an incredible piece. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll echo what Andrew was saying. It's used a lot. It, it gets killed in radio. I do really like the write, the writing in this though as well, uh, especially like the line like some folks fo- some folks are born silver spoon in hand. Uh, what Lord don't they help themselves? Selves when the taxman come to the door, Lord of the house looking like a rummage sale. I thought that was really cool. Um, it's kind of weird to talk about this song. Uh, my brother is into the armed forces, uh, so it's kind of like a it's like it's like an anti war song, but it's like it's like eh, like we're I feel like we're kind of get like giving giving too much. Um, but yeah. I, I admire the the ins, inspir, inspiration, instrumentation of it. How do I mess up all, all <laughs> words? That fucking word. <laughs> that's that's my head. Um, but yeah, I think I think why I have it at three thirty is just because I lean towards like their cover of like "Hurt It Through the Grapevine" or like um, or fucking like "Have You Ever Seen the Rain?" Where uh, I just. I like those instrumentations and I like those like those jams a little bit better. Uh yeah. It's yeah, it's 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 a it's an okay song. All right, Cody. Go ahead. Big talk coming from Casey Musgrave fan over there. Um uh it's an okay song. Um by the way, your beliefs and everything, you've never sounded more like Coho in my entire life than when you said this is top, this could be top fifty. Um like you could be, but that's that's a cold. Okay, answer. okay. No, 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 no. That's a cold. No. Answer. What? I feel attacked. Yeah. I need well, I need okay. to go to the well, I need to go to the yeah. hospital where I don't call, have to pay call the bills. hotline. Call the hotline of people that we have made feel uh bad about themselves. Go for it. Um I have a huge list of them. I should have t-shirts and I should Hello, have Co- Hello, I hate Cody Hotline. Hello, I hate <laughs> Cody Hotline. What did Cody do today? Hey, tell me I was about Coho. What'd you do? So Casey Grove Musgrave songs in my top 50. Sounds about right. Call back to the Nara. I'll just move on. Um, Fortune Son, I get it. Overplayed, but it's so much fun. It's his voice, the thoughts. I can always, it's, I tie it to movies. So that's always a bad thing for this show because you guys, you know, movies, TV, music. Um, and, um, with that scene where the helicopters are flying and it's Forrest Gump and it's just playing like loud and stuff, you're just like, yeah, this is this is what it is. So, and again, I can't imagine being like a mu- musician or like having to go through the process of like Vietnam and like what those people had to like actually do back then. Like, I'm no millionaire, son. I'm no senator. Unlike you know, it ain't me. It ain't me. I so. To go yeah, and then the and like I think if you went back in time and like we had the songwriters we have now versus back then, like the songs that they could have written about and the freedom they would have because not only the people coming home from war and how they were treated, like everything, just a crazy time. That 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 is like a lost point of history that I don't think has ever been like fully unveiled and discovered. And you kind of get a glimpse of that in the song. You hear like the anger when they sing about songs in Vietnam and stuff like the anger that was going on at the time. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, I had to close it now that I know what was coming. <laughs> this is a good move forward. Yeah, the, the songs that we got uh, that were protest songs were songs like American Life by Madonna. That's great. Uh, um, oh, um, what other ones? No, I had a pocket. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta the best we had was now, American like... Idiot, and that was like that was that was like the pinnacle, the peak. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, with that being said, let's recap the uh, episode just real fast. Uh, Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers. You can't always get what you want by the Rolling Stones. 
Lean on Me by Will Withers, you, uh, Will You Love Me Tomorrow by The Shirelles, Young Americans by David Bowie, What's Love Got to Do With It by Tina Turner, uh, The Ramones came in at number 124 with Blitz Creek Bop, The Zombies came in at number 123 with Time of the Season, Into the Mystic by Van Morrison, Feeling All Right by Joe Cocker, Common People album version by Pulp, uh, Crazy by Gnarls Barkley coming in at 119, Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix Experience, The Message Thanks. by Grandmaster Flash and The Furious Five, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd, uh, Everyday People by Sly and the Family Stone, Waterloo Sunset by The Kinks, Doctor My Eyes by Jackson Brown, Merry Go Round by Casey Musgraves, and Fortunate Son by Creams Clearwater Revival, rounding out this section of the list. Cody, also, I'm, Cody, sorry, Cody, you, you got the joke wrong. It's not. It's no longer movies, TV, football because TV isn't a community anymore. It's movies, football, then music. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Cody, I am sending it's you what is going to be the last 20 song playlist. Ooh. Next episode, which is going to be on our new channel, is the last episode where we're going to be covering 20 songs. We're going to be moving on to 10 after that. So, Cody, I just sent the playlist. Please take a look. And um, there's one song on there. Please be gentle. Uh -oh. Yes. Oh gosh. Um. Oh wow. Okay. Oh man, this is a this is a playlist. This is a playlist. I'm trying to find the one that you're telling me to be nice on. I, I know. I three. know which one it is. Oh, it's oh yes. Let's fucking go. It's oh oh. oh. <laughs> Whoa! Got it ready. It's a coming. See you later, old yeller. Um, dude. But overall, this is great playlist. Like names I know instantly, but also like some real fun songs. And a man that sits behind, sits down and plays at concerts. Two of those on there. I am a okay. I literally Which made this playlist. Either or, but I, that's awesome. I literally made this playlist and I immediately <laughs> messaged Brooklyn saying, yo, the playlist for this. Oh. <laughs> Some, if anybody knows me, they know a certain song is on that list that is just fire. All right, guys. Well, tune in to the next episode on our new channel. Uh, we will reiterate this once this episode actually comes out. But please join us there. Uh, so for Cody, for Brooklyn, and for myself, Andrew Barr, this is like 500 Stones, no longer subsidiary of the video store. And keep on rocking. Drive safely. Drive on safe. Do whatever you want.